Hi. If you've been uh, following along on the uh, 72 C20 hillbilly truck rebuilt, you'll see. Took the radiator out. Um, I replaced the heater core, and I started looking at it and said, "Gee, the only thing I haven't replaced brand new on this truck is the radiator." Even though, if you look at it, it's a pretty good radiator. It's in new condition. It's a big, fat, four-core copper brass radiator. It's in good shape. I just hate to put everything together and then find out down the road that this is coming apart because it's some internal com corrosion. Because this radiator is 20 years old, even though it only has a few thousand miles on it. It sat for a long time. And I don't know what's going on in there. I can flush it. I just I don't want to trust it anymore. And I also want to upgrade to an aluminum radiator. Um, so I got this particular radiator um, from uh, Automotive Dynasty, I think it was called. It's off of Amazon. It's a. I looked at Mishimoto. They were they wanted almost three hundred bucks for the same radiator. Um, I got on their website and it was messed up. I called to ask because the, the the sizes weren't right. I called to ask them and they they were no help and they said they'll refer me to engineering. I never heard from them again. So. Um, I went ahead, it's aluminum, took a chance with it. It's in good shape, well built. We'll take some close up looks at it in a second. Sizes, exactly, an exact match. I think I'm 28 and a quarter here by 18 and a half. And on here, I got the same measurements 18 and a half, 28 and a quarter. All the fittings are the same, everything's in the right place. The reason I went with the aluminum radiator, a lot of people, you know, you know, copper is a much better conductor of heat, that's for sure, except aluminum doesn't conduct heat almost as well, but it, what it does, it radiates it much better, and the heat will pass through it much better. Um, and you get copper and brass together, there's some, you can cause galvanic corrosion, but not much because they're not that dis dissimilar to metals. And then you threw in some steel here, which can cause a problem. And while copper doesn't um, dissipate the heat as well as aluminum, you also have to paint it. So when you paint it, you also insulate it so it dissipates the heat um, at an even slower rate. So that's why I looked at this and said I got a four core radiator here. I can go an aluminum three core instead and do just as good if not higher rate of cooling overall. Um, plus you get a higher rate of airflow because it's thinner and it's not you don't have the restriction in airflow. Um, there is a guy, um, he's got a site, it's uh, Engineering Explained. He does a much better job explaining the radiator cooling capacities. I don't need to waste my time on it. You can look him up and get the information. But we'll take a quick look here. I'll, I'll explain it my so way. I've got, I've did a sad attempt at drawing the three-core radiator here, cut off, cut off view. And the fins tubes are between it, and there's the passes, three cores. On a hot day, you've got 90 degree air going into it. It passes through, and if you've got 190 degree thermostat, that's the temperature of what's inside of these tubes. So, without going through the thermodynamics, which I'm not smart enough to do, I can tell you this much. If you've got 180 degrees here, this air is going to come out. It's going to go up. It's going to pick up air heat here, which means there's going to be a smaller differential you know, heat difference. So it's going to absorb heat at a slower rate here, and then even slower here. By the time you come out the other end, you'll be 150 degrees, 140, I'm guessing. But what's important is if I had another set of cores here to go through, up against it, you're pushing 150 degree air in, very low difference in temperature. This last set of well, rows isn't doing a whole lot of cooling. It's better to eliminate that last set put in the electric fans and draw the air through faster so you get more volume of air and you do a much higher volume of cooling that way. Plus the fact that they're aluminum, they're not painted, so they're not covered and they're not insulated. So simplest way to explain, that's why aluminum is the way to go. For the installation, I'm going to go with this aluminum shroud and get rid of the mechanical fan because when I first went to put it in, I was going to modify the plastic shroud so you can take it apart and work on it easier. It just didn't work right. Everything was in the way. It, was, it looked like it was going to be a pain in the ass to work on. So I'm going to get rid of the mechanical fan, put in this shroud with two electric fans, 
and a thermostatic control. These electric fans came with a few things. I weren't very impressed with it, but it was also $69 for the set of two fans. It came with a fan relay to control both fans. It came with a temperature sensor and a relay to control both fans. The temperature sensor just screws in and what's nice about it is if it ever goes there's no hole here. This screws into the engine and then this part's going to unscrew. So if you ever have to change this sensor you don't have to drain the antifreeze out. Just screw a new, new one in. And a tip when you install these do not use sealer on the threads because you don't want to uh, um, insulate that because it passes light electric current through it. This shroud, I got this from an, for another job for someone else and I never used it. I'm glad because it was 129 bucks. It was a Flexalite 535288. Um, the problem with it though is it doesn't quite fit the radiator. a little bit longer the measurements when when the measurements it showed in the catalog were actually from here to here and not across the ears so had I went to use it for that person's car it wouldn't have worked anyway but I'm gonna modify it to make it work because it's free I'm glad because this would have been $129 the radiator was only $169 I think I would have just bought a piece of aluminum and made one myself which is really the way to go so one thing I didn't like about the fan kit and the shroud, you got an aluminum radiator, aluminum shroud, and they give you these damn steel bolts, steel hardware that's going to rust. So you throw that out and uh, get stainless hardware. This guy, this little rubber plug, plastic plug, there's nothing wrong with it. I see a lot of people that buy these, they don't like them, they throw them away. It's not going to rust, it's only 15 psi, there's nothing wrong with this plug. But what I don't like about it is it's got this little groove to drain and when you unscrew it the fluid just goes everywhere and it doesn't drain properly it makes a mess so I've got this stainless steel Dorman one well it's chrome it's brass it's chrome plated but it's Dorman it's the old kind it's gonna unscrew and put a hose on here and, and drain it down definitely the way to go and I'll put some thread seal on there and stick it on here let's move in a little closer okay this guy's got this hose connection for a heater hose. If you don't use it, you leave this bolt in. It's got a little rubber washer, a rubber o-ring. I'm going to use it, so that guy goes in the pile of stuff to keep for no apparent reason. But if you look at it, the welds are excellent. It's good, well, really good construction. This is aluminum. It's not steel, so it's not going to have any galvanic corrosion. There's nothing, no metal on here except for aluminum and my chrome plated blast brass drain that's it so what I'm gonna do with it when I put it in let's get this out of the way it's like as you can see the shroud that I'm gonna put on there is gonna hit right here and that'll vibrate and tear these fins up so I'm gonna put a little bit of space in it I'm going to bolt it so there's about an eighth of an inch of space between it. And then right here, I'm going to put a lip molding, just a lip seal, a thick rubber one. So if it does vibrate, it rubs up against it and it's not a problem and it'll seal it. Also, this doesn't quite fit. It stands too high. And I took it in the truck. I'm going to cut it here. and cut this out all the way across a nice straight line so that lip will come up here this will tuck in I'll drill a couple extra holes and I'll be able to bolt it down there and then up on top all right so I've got my shroud I cut the ends off of it I gotta modify this to fit the radiator and if I lay this on here this will eventually wear through the aluminum and cause a leak so I need to put a rubber lip seal. Um, didn't find some really good ones. 
So I found this seal, and it's a door edge seal. It's from Home Depot. Top and side door seal for door jams. But it's aluminum, and it's got a little rubber piece on it. And I went and pre-drilled the holes. I pre-drilled the holes for the fans, and I pre-drilled the holes. I'm going to rivet these in. And they're going to go like this and seat on there to help it. So let's get this radiator out of the way. These long rivets and a washer. There we go. And run that through here. Start with the center one. And throw that washer on there. Basically, like that. The other side looks nice and neat. On the radiator, on the bracket that goes along the bottom of the radiator, um, I'll show you a picture of it right here. And there's, those holes are 12 inches apart, so I'm just going to make a bracket to go across the bottom. I'm going to make it out of some scrap angle iron I have. It's got to be at least 24 inches long. This is 27. So it'll be fine. This brake you can get actually from Harbor Freight. It's pretty cheap, but it's just fine for sheet metal and aluminum. And that's about all I bend. Gap right here. It's about a half inch to three quarter inch. There, that's good. There we go. There's our bend. I've been a short one as a template to test it. So I'm pretty close. I'll straighten the rest out. I'll bend the other one. I think I'm going to trim this edge too. Make it a little shorter so I can move it around. I trimmed it a little bit. And these are the holes that it's going to bolt into along the top here. So I'm just going to Stick that in there right now. Just let it sit for a minute. I bolted this part up tight. I've also bolted the fans in. Attached them. So I'm going to slip that under here. And then I'll put this over the top of this. And so that's where we're going to be when we're done. And I'm going to drill this out and put some rivets in and just to make sure just to make sure I don't do anything stupid I'm going to slip this piece of aluminum under here so while I'm drilling come on I don't accidentally hit my radiator and drill a hole through it because that probably pissed me off It'd be fun for anybody watching, and, and I'd show it. So I'll just do a few of these. going to do two so I can rivet it in place and I'm going to flip it over and I'll put the rest of the rivets in with the washers to reinforce them. side okay so there's my assembly put together I, I decided I would go ahead and put the uh, 
stainless steel washers on the back of these rivets just for added strength. I put some closed cell foam insulation. The pink closed cell foam, if you're going to use it, is important because it won't absorb moisture. And you can see this rubber, it actually doesn't put any pressure at all on here. It's just to fill the gap and keep debris keep debris from getting in there so we're about ready to go and throw it in the truck down but on the other side you can see ooh, let's see if I'm about to shove a hammer through the radiator the other side you can see the bolts so just take out these four bolts and the whole assembly comes off in one piece So the only thing that will probably ever go wrong is maybe one of these fans will burn out and they're somewhere to the tune of 10 bucks each or something like that for this little motor. Next we'll go out in the garage and install it. So I want to take the fan, I want to take the fan belt, the fan off and if it's a clutch fan or whatever this one's not. That's four half inch bolts in the front. The belt's on so it should be tight enough, I just give it a little snap, they'll pop off. Get out of the way. These, these bolts I'm going to replace with these guys. They're a flange bolt, but they'll lock, so I don't need a locking washer. And, okay, since they're stainless steel, you want to put never seize on them. You usually want to put that on anyway, but I had to pause the camera because I had to spend the required 15 minutes to walk around the garage and try and figure out where the hell I sat one of my three cans of Never Seize. So I bought three of them, that way I wouldn't spend 15 minutes walking around looking for them, but apparently that didn't go well. So we'll do these four in here. Okay, and these are to be torqued down to yeah, 38.6 pounds. That, that's about right, right there. I'm going to hold bet there's a torque spec on that. I don't know it. Someone would like to share that for what value it will be. Go for it. So, quick peek. Nice and pretty. And now I don't have to worry about banging that against the fan if I change the radiator again, which hopefully I'll never have to do. As you can see, I've added the relay and the wiring to go off the thermostat and power. To get a quick look at it, we've got a drawing that came with it. I colored it in to make it easier to show. I think I did a pretty good job of standing the lines all by myself. But you've got the main red power line. That's this guy feeds up through here to the relay and then you've got the black oh I didn't paint it black the black ground that comes out so according to this drawing it's pretty simple you got the power line running through the relay to the fans and then you've got a yellow signal wire that comes in for 100 for 120 volts for 12 volts for, uh, tied to the ignition so when you turn the ignition on this 12 volts runs through the thermostat if it gets hot enough, the thermostat closes and lets power in here. It sees the signal and then closes this switch inside the relay to let the fans run. 
and then the chassis ground that goes off and that's also I ran it through this con through this uh, smurf tube or what do you call it uh, uh, plastic shit and that'll go in and ground to the core support also instead of running from the ignition switch which it normally would do on this truck this particular truck I installed a uh, new wiring harness and it came with an option for the um, a fan electric fan and just so I don't have to do a whole lot of thinking they were nice enough to write the words electric fan on the orange wire for me now this wire is heavy enough to carry the current for the whole fan instead of the relay um, but that's all I'm going to use it for it's it's tied to the ignition when you turn it on it feeds power out to the fan but normally you would just grab a um, ignition power source and then down here I've got my plug for where I'm going to put my thermostat in I've drained all the antifreeze out okay I drained most of the antifreeze out and I'll hook that up did notice right here I got a gash in my air conditioner core I don't know how I did that but I suspect that there will be a video on repairing air conditioner cores now we basically just drop it in and hook the wiring up I'm just going to shove this tube in the hole not tighten up yet just because it'll help push this out of the way keep the radiator from falling forward until I hook up the hoses now I use these stainless steel hoses just because I'm big on that and I don't want to replace parts anymore so they have these little bushings and I've used these for a long time and I've never had them fail so even though I don't like the extra bushings it seems to do a pretty good job stick that in there and blow it upstream and get it out of the way There we go. You can see on the side, I wrote the part number for this radiator. It's AD, and that's for Auto Dynasty. RA, and genius, that's for radiator. And CK67-3. Almost any manufacturer is going to have this part number, CK67. That's for the... Um, Chevy or um, GMC, the C type or K type, 67, and that's for the year 67 to 72 style. And the 3 means it's a 3 core. So if you want to look up a radiator, just type aluminum CK67, and you'll find all, almost all the manufacturers listed. It's a good way to do a chase down prices and availability. Or if you want to do CK67 4 for a 4 core, I'm not sure you want that for aluminum, it's a little overkill, but who knows what you do. Maybe you need it. At the bottom, transmission line started. We'll do the top one. These can be a, a pain in the ass sometimes to get them in the right place to get the thread started. And they're really easy to strip. And this aluminum radiator you don't want to tighten the hell out of them. You strip the aluminum out, you're, you're screwed. Power supply lines. I get my heater hose in there. This is the bracket that goes on here and covers it up and grabs a hold of it right there. 
but I use the four core instead of a uh, three core instead of a four core, so the, this guy's a little too wide. Plus, I don't like it. It's not pretty enough. I need more bling. Well, I got this guy made for a 72 Monte Carlo, and you can see the these things I just already fastened in there, so they're good to go. And on the top, I don't know if you can see this. I put a strip, yeah, you can see it. I put a strip across the top, welded some nuts upside down in them, and they're all stainless steel, and then bolted it on either end. So I could just take these two bolts out and remove the whole thing, and or take all four of these out. Why the hell I took all four of them out, I don't know. But that guy will go on top. Bolt it down, and we're good to go. That guy hangs it onto it pretty good. We don't have to worry about it falling into the fan anyway, because we don't have a mechanical fan anymore. So this side's all good. We hook up the power and the ground, and I'll back up the camera. So I have an original or a a screw I've already put in, and it's stainless, and it's a good grounding point. So I'm going to throw a connector on the end of this guy. Oops. What I think is kind of funny is I got down here to film this and then turned and noticed that there's that rubber piece that I lost. I sat it down there. Damn it. So let me come back up here. I've got this little terminal block on my battery. When the wrench falls on the floor, that means it's tight enough. Give it a tug test and work good. Throw the cap on there so I can't lay a wrench across it and do any arc welding. My ends on. Need to screw my sensor in. It's down here. And it really doesn't matter what side of the switch you put each wire. Okay, if I want to test it now, I've got the ignition turned on. Just jump these two out. And you can see in here, they're working pretty good. By the way, you really want them on this side of the engine, and you want the air to pull through rather than push through. Here's my thermostat. Pop my plugs back on and I'm good to go. We go, all hooked up. Um, only thing left to do is top it off with antifreeze, leak test it, and I don't have the fenders on this truck yet, so I don't have the overflow tank piped up. As you can see, I I got a little bit more work to do. But more of these videos are coming. Thanks for watching.